welcome everybody and thank you for those who are in attendance and thank you to, the, to those who are joining us online through Facebook and later YouTube as well. Um, we just want to commemorate this day particularly because um, we want to acknowledge the partnership between Amen and, and Loud Liberty. Um, we'll be moving uh, We'll be moving forward uh, separately, and that's, if that makes sense. As Amen will be um, starting their Wednesday night ministries uh, next Wednesday, so we're happy for them in that sense because um, it's a it's a way for them to just uh, uh, for another ministry out there to be available to people who are in need of it. And so um, there could be, uh, in my eyes, there can never be too many choices to where you can serve the Lord in a sense, and so to where you can feel the Lord's presence as well. So we, we at Loud, Loud Liberty, we're, we want to acknowledge you, and we want to celebrate you to the, uh, our, our partnership this, uh, today as well. So later on, when Chance comes, here, comes up here to share the word, there will be a, a special gift that will be given to you all. So. And so with that being said, I won't harp on this too long, but I do want to acknowledge uh, the people behind me who will be leading worship um, Destiny and Olivia, um, who will be uh, leading us in worship, um, and I'm sure they're going to do well. I know they're going to do well. So, uh, but other than that, um, I'm gonna leave it to them. And so, and thank you all for being here. As I said, so, thank you. Everyone, please stand up for praise and worship. for me loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so He is jealous for me Loves like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath the weight of his hand and mercy all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us oh, oh how he loves us, how he loves us so.
worship you, I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Touch in every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Everyone, please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we're here today, that we all was able to make it, and that this would be the last joint service with Amen. And also, please be with um, them while they do their own service. And next week, that you be with them and give them the strength to go through that. And also, for... The sermon today for Brother Chance, that you give the strength and the wisdom, and that through him, that you go through him to for the sermon. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, ladies. Ah, thank you. Uh, a good turnout. I'm very... Um, Encouraged to see so many faces, young and old alike, uh, with one heart, and that heart is to to serve God and to praise God, and um, welcome those out there in the internet world, and to be able to join us today on this Wednesday. Um, but let's let's go in a word of prayer. Dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much, Father, for today. Father, thank you for a. a friendship with Amen Baptist that uh, we will never forget. And today, um, allow us, Father, to praise you by 
acknowledging and showing our appreciation to our friends because at the end of the day, we all do this because for your, for your glory, Father. Father, be with me as I share this message. And may, be, may it be a message that is touching to and pleasing to you, Father. Father, be with me. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so I, yeah, I've been thinking about what message should I talk about today. And fitting enough, I wanted to talk about friendship. But not any kind of friendship, a, a sacrificial type of friendship. And um, so I read up on this one story. Let me share with you with this story. This story is happened in World War, World War I. A story about two guys who were inseparable. They um, got enlisted in the army together. They trained together. They were shipped overseas together, and they fought together, side by side. In one particular um, battle, um, one of the friends got shot and injured. And, you know, in this, just like that scene there, there's barbed wire fence all over the place. So his friend got wounded, and then he had to leave, and then he went into his little trench there, and then his friend was, was mourning in pain and agony, and then he was about to go and get his friend, but his sergeant pulled him aside and says, no, 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 don't do that. That's a suicide mission. There's nothing you could do for this guy. And then as soon as the sergeant turned his back, his friend just went out of the trench to rescue his friend. And then moments later, that man brought his friend who was wounded back. And then the sarge, the, the, his commander, the sergeant, saw this, he was both angry and he was touched. He told this guy, and this guy that went to rescue his friend was also mortally wounded. He told his friend, what, you know, was it worth it? Was it worth it to rescue this friend of yours? Now his friend's already dead, but this guy, he, he was also dying. Then, you know, with his last breath, he told his commander, he says, yes, it was, because my friend's last breath, when he saw me, he said to me was, I knew you'll come for me, buddy. And then both men passed. <clears throat> so that is a picture perfect of what friendship is all about, sacrificial friendship. Now, one of the true markers of a friend a true friend is that they are there when they have every reason not to be there. And by them being there, it costs them dearly. And that's a friend. And, and I was reading on, wanted to see some quotes about friendship. One of the quotes that I got from uh, C.S. Lewis, the guy uh, that wrote um, the Narnia and, and all the Christian books, he said this, he said, friendship is born at that moment when one person said to the other, what? You too? I thought it was just only me. And also friendship is one, a, a, a true friend is one who multiplies joy but divides grief. And a friend is one who comes in when the world leaves. That's a friend. You know, Proverbs we'll get into, teaches us that if we are to have friends, we have to be a friend. And a friend is going to stick with us like a brother, right? And Jesus himself said in John chapter 15, which we'll go into also, he says this, he says that true friendship is one who lays down his life for his friend. So true friendship in a biblical sense it's putting your needs above others. I'm sorry, putting others' needs above yours. So now, if you think about it, true friendship wants nothing for itself. It, it goes along with that old adage that uh, it's better to receive than to, it, it, it's better to give than to receive, right? And it's better to give yourself to others than to expect others to give to you. That's true friendship. And, and I share this because there is a group of um, young men and women 
that, that shares that biblical principle. And that's my friends at Amen Baptist. And, you know, since the start of our Wednesdays, these guys has been with us each and every Wednesday. They unselfishly put our needs above theirs, and they helped us to start a ministry during the heart of the pandemic. We didn't have a praise and worship band at that time, and they volunteered. They volunteered to be here week in, week out, rain or shine, to fulfill the calling that's in their heart. So that we, amen, and allow liberty can be a blessing in the eyes of the Lord. So it's with sadness and joy to announce that you know, they themselves are going to start their own um, Wednesday night service with the leadership of Brother Jai. And today, before I go on to my message, let, let, let me have Brother Jai and uh, Brother Carlos up here. Come on, come up here so the world can see who you are. And I also want to call um, our pastor, Pastor Moncom, uh, to come up here. Just say a little words. This is uh, Brother Jai. This is uh, Brother Carlos. He's one of the sexy voice uh, musicians that we had uh, so this is how you, this is who he is. And um, Pastor, would you say a word or two about this occasion? All I need to say is say thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. This is our true friend. Yeah. Since uh, last. Uh, August or October, I believe. Yeah. I see you guys just come and come and come and helping us and support us until today. When I see you guys first come, I'm really happy. But now, I'm feeling sad to see you guys go. You're just down the street. Down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I heard a uh, a Chinese proverb, it say, every party have its own end town. But one day, when we go to heaven to worship together, we will be never end. Amen. Yeah. So, from bottom of our heart and behalf of Lao Liberty Baptist Church, I would like to say thank you again for you coming and help us. This is not coincidence, but I believe because our Lord calling you and you say yes. And thank you for the yes. So we have a special gift for you. We'll be turned this way. Yes, for the camera. Yeah, yeah. and camera. I believe one day we will see each other again. And thank you very much for all you do, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So back to the message. The question is, how many friends do we need? Do we need as much friends as we have on our Facebook uh, friends list? Or do we have just one or two? Now let's think about this because, you know, when we go through the most difficult times of our life, how many friends do we really need? Now we throw around this word friend very casually nowadays, right? We say Hapin mu gun or hapin seal gun, two different words, right? And we call each other friends all the time. So the word friends has been lately been watered down. 
And I think Facebook has it wrong when Facebook has friends on their thing. I think it should be more of acquaintance, because your acquaintance are the people that you just met. You, don't, you know nothing about them, you just met them, and that's all, just name basis. How many of our Facebook acquaintance know anything about us, personal? Are they close enough to know your deepest secrets? So the real needs in life isn't to, to get the like, 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 like on your Facebook account, but to find that one or two friend whom you could confide in, who knows the deepest secrets of your heart. And they're the ones who knows our fears, knows our joy, and more importantly, they know how to redirect us back to God to strengthen us. Those are the true friends. Now, if you have your Bible, please turn to Proverbs, chapters 18, verses 24. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 24. The NIV says this. Chapters 18, verses 24, Proverbs. One who has unreal, unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, we all have friends that gotten us into one or two troubles from time to time, right? We do. We have a lot of friends. But do we have any friends that is close to us and stick to us like brothers? See, God, he knows that David needs a friend like that in his time of trouble. Young King David. So that's why he provided a friend named Jonathan. And he'll be the, the, the main character of our study today. So please turn to my main verse. It's in 1 Samuel, chapters 23, verses 15 to 18. 1 Samuel, chapters 23, verses 15 to 18. While David was at Horesh in the desert of Zephi, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David at Horesh, and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horesh. Now, a little backdrop to this verse What's been going on is that Saul, being so jealous of David, has been chasing David, trying to kill David. And this verse talks about the, the, the third and the final time that Jonathan and David met. And like we just read in Proverbs chapters... Um, 18. David, he needed a friend in his time of trouble because he was running for his life. Saul was trying to kill him. So God provided him with Jonathan. And Jonathan played a very critical role in strengthening young King David. So what I want to do now is go back in the beginning. And we're going to read um, how the friendship of these two started, okay? It, turn with me to... Uh, 1 Samuel chapters 18, verses 1 through 4. 1 so Samuel chapters 18, 1 through 4. And this is after David just killed Goliath, okay? So after David finished talking with Saul, Jonathan, becoming one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him. And did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off his robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. 
Now, the Bible, NIV says that these two were one in spirit. The ESV version says that they were knitted together, knit together. That the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. That's how, that's how close they were. That, that was the bond that they had. You know, David, like I said, just returned home from killing Goliath. And Jonathan, he can relate to this as well because Jonathan knows about bravery too. Jonathan, if you have time, read um, 1 Samuel chapters 14. You, you read about how Jonathan and his um, armor bearer sneak up on the, uh, the Palestinian, um, the, the Palestine's um, stronghold and, and, and attack them. So Jonathan know something about slavery, I mean, about bravery as well, because they both trust the Lord. They, they, they both have a mutual understanding about what it takes to have faith in the Lord, to use the Lord for their strength. And they're what we call, you know, brothers from a different mother. That's how they were. So back to our verse, you know, Jonathan in chapters 18, uh, 1 Samuel chapters 18, verses 13, he made a covenant with David. And the writer of this noted twice that he, he made this covenant. Why? Because he loved David like he loved himself. That's how much he loved David. So Jonathan ended up meeting David, and he gives David his robe his belt, his sword. Now, this is a young prince about to be a king. And when you wear a robe, that signifies that you are going to be king. So Jonathan gave David his robe, his belt, his sword. So Jonathan sees David not as a rival, but as a friend that he loved dearly. And the writer of this uh, book went on to highlight that Jonathan and David made three covenants. Samuel's 18, 3, Samuel 26, and Samuel 23, 18. These are three different, there are three different occasions where they solidified the same covenant, the same covenant to love each other and to, to never leave each other. That's the bond that they have, this friendship. It, it's, it's, it's like that marriage um, vow that you make to each other. You're committed to each other. So Jonathan, three times, in three different chapters, made a covenant with his friend because he was committed wholeheartedly to the well-being of his friend. And this is the, the first mark of a true friendship is being wholeheartedly committed to each other. Just like a friend at Amen Baptist. They were wholeheartedly committed to us in our ministry. Knowing that their commitment was first to God, then as a result, because of that bond that they have with God and their love for God, they came and been with us week in, week out. That is their commitment. And just like Jonathan, Amen was not a fair, fair, fair weather fan. Jonathan, he wasn't a fair, feather, a fair weather fan. That's, that means, it's like, it's like, that's fair weather fan. Jonathan wasn't like that. He stuck with his friend. He had a risk being on the opposite side of his dad, Saul, just to be with his friend. So he was committed to the friendship of his friend David because he wanted to see God's best in his little friend, even if it means that he has to take sides against his dad, even if he has to be second best. Because, you know, in verse 23, I mean, 1 Samuel chapters 23, verse 17, this is what he said. He said that I will be with you 
He says this in uh, verse 17. He says that, don't be afraid. He says, my father Saul would not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. So Jonathan was very committed to his friend. So that's why, my friends, let's not evaluate friendship based on what we can get from our friend. We should enter, rather, enter into a friendship with the desire to bless that person, even if it means jeopardizing our own well-being or the cost of us. For that matter, don't enter into a friendship with a thought of getting something out of that person. If you do, then you started on the wrong starting point in the friendship. Because Jesus says this very pointedly. He says in John 15, 3, he says, Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. A good friend gives. They do, they give. They don't take. And at times, they give themselves to their friend. So thank you, Jesus, for giving your life to us on the cross because we are your friend. You think of us as your friend. And so back, back to our story about Jonathan and David. On their second covenant meeting, Jonathan and David met again. And what's going on now is that David came to Jonathan and said, hey, hey, your dad's trying to kill me. I don't know why. And Jonathan's like, hey, hey, you know, hold, hold on. Let's plan this. I'm going to have you hide behind a rock. I'm going to go talk to my dad, and then let me check things out. If it's good news, I'll tell you. If it's bad news, I'll tell you. And then this is how we're going to lay this out. So if you turn your Bible to 1 Samuel, chapters 20, verses 16 to 17. And this is their second covenant that they made with each other. 1 Samuel, chapters 20, verses 16 to 17. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemy to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of the love for him. Because why? He loved him as he loved himself. So then, after they made this covenant, Jonathan then went to his dad. He was just trying to test out the water. He wanted to see if his dad was going to harm David or not. And then, this is what happened. So he tries to talk some sense into Saul, saying, hey, you know, don't kill David. He hadn't done nothing wrong to you. And this is what happened. A little um, forward to verse 33 in the same chapter. Chapter 20, verse 33. But Saul hurled his spear at John than him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. So after Jonathan tried to talk to his dad and got this uh, revelation, he had to go now to tell David the bad news. So a little further down, verse 44, uh, 42. So Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have swore friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendant and my descendant forever. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to the town. You know, the second mark of a true friendship is unwavering support. the same unwavering support that, that Jonathan gave to David. And it's the same wavering support that I think Amen has given us since we started this. They faithfully came 
and led the praise and worship team week in, week out. They did this knowing that by helping us, we both are a blessing to the Lord and to those who, who follow us on, on um, the internet. So thank you. Amen. Thank you. And then finally, the passage that we just read, their, their third covenant uh, encounter, and sadly, it's the last, because this, this is the last time Jonathan and David's going to see each other. Uh, 1 Samuel chapters 23, verses um, 18. Let's look at that again. And this is the last covenant that, that these two made. And the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Haresh. Now, Jonathan came looking for his friend David. Why? Why do you think he came looking for David, given all the dangers that, that, that's going on? It's for one thing. That one thing is, is that he wanted to encourage his friend. And that's the third mark of a true friendship, is to encourage each other. When was the last time, when was the last time your friends risked it all to come to be on your side to encourage you? Jonathan was, was like that New Testament Barnabas, right? Barnabas, the son of encouragement, who encouraged Saul before he became Paul. That same spirit was in Jonathan as it was and Barnabas, if you think about it. And this is what Jonathan said, again, 1 Samuel, verse 23, but let's read um, uh, chapter 23. Let's, let's read verse 17. This is what Jonathan said, encouraging young David. He says, don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my my father, Saul, knows this. Now, think about that for a second. Let's, let's just break that down. Let's break that verse down. So Jonathan is saying to David, he's encouraging David, hey, don't be afraid. What, 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 what he's saying is, hey, hey, little brother, don't be afraid. Don't let fear cripple you. Have faith in God. And then what else did he say? He says, hey, hey, my father Saul will not lay a hand on you. And Jonathan's encouraging David, like, and he's saying, hey, little brother, don't worry, you will succeed. Saul cannot harm you. God has protected you then, and he's going to protect you from now on. And he's also saying what? You will be king over Israel. And Jonathan is encouraging his young brother, his young friend, and reassuring him that, hey, that's God's promise to you, and that's his plan for your life. Nobody's going to change that plan. And then what else did he say? He says, hey, I will be second to you. And Jonathan, he's reassuring David that he's going to be by this man. He's going to stand behind this, guy, this little brother of his, even if it makes him number two. He will be number two to David, and he's fine with that. That's encouraging and lastly, he says, hey, even my father Saul knows this. And he's telling David, like, hey, little brother, don't worry. Even the guy that's trying to kill you knows that it's not working. So don't worry. Now, when was the last time we had a friend that, that, that did that for us? If you think about Jonathan, he's a friend that you want to hold on to. Because he was in between a rock and a hard place. One part, he had, he's a prince. He's going to be king. His dad wanted him to have the throne. The other half, he's this guy's brother, friend. But nonetheless, he was committed to young David. What we see here is one brother encouraging a brother that was lacking courage. And that, I think, is the, 
the ultimate thing. He's encouraging his young little brother David to find strength in the Lord. And that's the, the finest thing that we can do for a friend. And that's the third mark of a friendship. Because when you encourage, you are, you are inspiring courage for someone who's losing that. And if, if, if I may say, you know, during our um, Wednesday nights, earlier part of our Wednesday night, Brother Lennon and, and I, I, you know, if I could speak for him, that we were discouraged at times. You know, people didn't show up and, and things happened, the, mach- the, the equipment didn't work, and we were discouraged sometimes. But it was the faithfulness, the commitment of our young friends, is amen, that kept on showing up week in, week out, that gave us encouragement. So let's treasure the Jonathans in our life. Let's keep them. Let's keep those friends that we have in Jonathan. Yeah, unlike our friends at Facebook, yeah, we could unfriend those guys. We could unfollow them. But we should keep our Jonathan. Those are the ones that will help you build confidence and faith in you and then help you find strength in the Lord. That's the true friend that you have, the true biblical friend. So we should pray that God will give us our Jonathan, our friend that's going to sacrifice himself. Despite all odds, he's going to be there, she's going to be there. And she's going to, and he is going to sacrifice himself for you. That's a true friend. And likewise, we should all strive to be the Jonathan for a David. There's a young David that's discouraged. There's a young David out there that has lost his way. We, we had our Jonathan in this ministry with our friends at Amen. And they sometimes will be that David, and we have to return that friendship. We need to, when it's our time, to be that Jonathan for them. It takes effort to be a Jonathan, my friends, because it's not easy. There's sacrifices that we have to make. So thank you, Brother Jai, and all your youth, Victoria, Carlos, and Sophia, for your sacrifice. And thank you for the leadership of this church and the leadership of your church for understanding the importance of collaborative joint ministry. Because we're doing this not for our own. We're doing this for the Lord. We're doing this for, for His will to bless others, not us. So together we're glorifying God, Jesus Christ. So thank you again, my friend. So let's, let's all rise. Let's close out in a word of prayer. Dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much, Father, for giving us at our time of discouragement, in our time of uncertainty, our friends from Amen Baptist, who became the Jonathan that we needed, that was committed to us wholeheartedly because they were committed to you, that showed us unwavering support, and that encouraged us to find strength, not in ourselves, but in you. And those things, dear Father, are the friends that we want. We can do without the acquaintances, but we need more of these biblical friends of ours. Thank you, Father. Father, we also lift up the Amen group as well, because they are about to embark on their own calling in their church. Be with them. Strengthen them. And, and I pray that Lao Liberty here 
can return the commitment, the support, and the encouragement that was given to us in our time of need, to be a Jonathan when it's our time. Because true friendship is not take, take, take. True friendship is give. And sometimes we have to give sacrificially of ourselves, like you, Father, have given yourself to us on the cross. Father, in all things that we do, we lift you up, Father. We praise you in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, those out there.